Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Dino Weekly Update. This week, I wanted to talk about Dino Doc. We've been improving the HTML output of this the last couple of weeks, and it's getting pretty good. So let me give you a little demo here. So if you go to Dino Doc dash dash HTML, and then you have to give a URL to or a specifier to whatever you want to document. In this case, I want to try the STD asserts library and then you run it, then you get an error. And it's like, oh, you have to give it a name, which is really easy just to say, well, let's call this std assert. And uh, what that does is it creates a little directory uh, with the docs, and this has a bunch of static HTML in that. So we can open docs index HTML, and what you get here is some nice auto-generated documentation that is laying all of the types and, and uh, anything you, you need to know about uh, the asserts module. Uh, so we'll be building on this, but it's definitely worth, worth trying out right now. I gave a URL here of, of some example output in case you want to check it out, std-assert-docs.dino.dev. Also, WebGPU has landed in, in Dino, and we are building on this. Divi and Leo in particular are, are building on this to allow people to build GUI applications uh, on top of WebGPU with Dino. So this feature is called Bring Your Own Window, and it allows you to display a window that is driven by WebGL that is not dependent on any web browser and does support Dino compile. So imagine building little games that can be compiled into a single executable and distributed as such in pure TypeScript with WebGPU, but without the web browser. So some examples are Conway's Games of Life or Illusion, a WebGPU game engine. Uh, and this screenshot here is of Minecraft uh, port that, that's running on WebGPU in, in a window here. And what I'm hoping for is that somebody will build me a new GPU-driven Spotify client that looks like Winamp uh, in a way that I can replace the, the bloaty Electron Spotify app with uh, and is, is just a kind of a clean client. Childprocess.fork has been, it now supports IPC, but in particular, the Windows support has landed and it's looking pretty fast. This, this, this is a Node.js API that we needed to implement to support Next.js in particular. And here is, is a benchmark of, of how we're doing. Down here at the, at the lower end, I, there's still a bit of work to do to, to improve the speed, but generally child process fork IPC is, is looking very fast and, and very nice. Finally, over the break, Bartek's been working on porting the Dino code base over to Hyper 1.0. Hyper, if you don't know, is, is the most popular web server in Rust, and it went 1.0 back in November after many, many years of development. I have no idea, maybe uh, five plus years of development. Uh, and we are almost complete in, in now using the, the Hyper 1.0 API. So just maybe that's not so exciting because it's not very user visible to, to Dino users, but just a bit of, of uh, internal development, on uh, ongoing internal development. That's it for this week. Thanks. Bye.